masonry is the art of preparing a rock to take its seat within a portion of a structure with perfect composure. This stone, as the date stone uh, shows, was erected with the building in 1891. The weathering in it has been fairly severe, but it's been situated in a fairly aggressive atmosphere here. The presence of the powerhouse belting out smoke nearby didn't help much at all. Sydney also has an acid rain condition in its atmosphere. So that over the period of 90 years that, of its existence, it's reached a fairly sad state of decay. With restoration, of course, the the main object is to retain as much of the original fabric as you, you can and where there is any replacement to be made it has to be done very sympathetically with the existing material. The masonry has to be carried out as meticulously as it was at the time of its construction. It's in a grey stone from Piedmont and in order to match the grey stone we've used Wanderbine grey stone. Wanderbine was opened in the late 20s and operated through the 1930s. When the quarry is initially opened, a floor is established from the capstone. This is the exposed upper stone. The stepping process has continued, and this is why you get this terraced appearance in all quarries. This is one of the better quality quarry blocks in this location. It contains about overall two cubic metres of uh, stone, of which about 60% of it is uh, usable material. It's a grey stone. Uh, it's come from one of the deeper lifts and could not be expected to weather to anything but a, a grey stone uh, over, a, over a large period of years. There is a floor up in that corner that's quite obvious where those lines appear. They're mica reeds and could cause structural failure in an overhanging block of stone and will be cut out of this block. Uh, but basically it is a good quarry block. Channeling machine, it's virtually a drill. Parallel uh, channel cuts are made and uh, where these channel cuts join the quarry floor, wedges are inserted and the quarry block is boarded off, split off uh, with its plane of cleavage. Plugs and feathers are simply pieces of tapered steel. There are two semicircular feathers that are wedge-shaped. The plug is just a wedge-shaped plug. Drill holes are drilled to accommodate the plugs. The feather is inserted in the top and driven in so that the stone is forced apart to reduce it to a more easily handled size. This is a gang saw. You'll see that the steel blades are placed parallel according to the height of the stone slab that is required. Steel shot and water is fed through tubes to the top of the stone over each of the blades and by attrition the stone is cut through. Generally a quarry block of this size takes from three hours to half a day. Quarry blocks are generally uh, quarried to about five to six tonnes. The first use of stone by man is lost in antiquity, but from the beginning it has been used by man to mark his victories and his uh, defeats, and perhaps more than anything else it's been used as a, a symbol of durability. Basic geometry plays a very important part in masonry. The Greeks were great geometricians, they developed quite beautiful geometrical forms in their mouldings. The Romans, who were the engineering masons, developed the semicircular arch, and the medieval masons, in plane geometry, created their tracery using equilateral triangles, acute angle triangles and obtuse angle triangles. The development of groin vaulting and domes and pendentives introduced more complex geometrical practice in solid geometry. Quite often the apprentice doesn't realise he's being 
taught geometry, but he is actually applying it. And uh, later as his skills develop, and he shows the interest, he will be taught. The more complicated stones here will take five to six weeks of a mason's continuous labour to complete. The tools used for working a stone are basically the same as those that have been used for thousands of years. And the processes that we follow are the same. It's a progression from one procedure to another. And progressive use of tools, points and chisels to prepare the surface of his work. Firstly, the unwanted material is removed with a pitching tool. This is followed by the preparation of a draft, followed by punches or points as they're sometimes called, which are finely drawn steel points used with a steel hammer. To create a rounded surface, the mason creates, it cuts a series of tangents which are reduced in width until they become unapparent. He finally rubs the surface with a carburetor block of water to produce a smooth, even finish. The punch is used to further reduce the surface towards its ultimate finish, followed by the claw chisel, which again produces a finer surface. Each tool is used to remove marks left by the previous tool. You've got about a day behind him. Yes, yes. You yeah, because I started I, uh, behind him too. Yeah? Yeah. Do you reckon he'll catch him? No, a bit hard because he's, he's, he's a good boy. Yeah. Since the Department of Public Works engaged upon a program of uh, intensive restoration of its public buildings, they've built up what now is the largest team of banker masons in the Commonwealth. Gary's almost completed this stone. He's now in the process of providing that fielded panel, which will contain a mould through this chamfer leading onto a plain chisel surface. This is a mallet headed boasting chisel, which is used to bring the stone to its ultimate form. The work can be left off the chisel or later rubbed to produce a smooth, even surface in which no boaster marks are apparent. This is one of the original stones. It's still complete. However, it's necessary to uh, remove the grime by friction with another stone and water. No acids or chemical treatment is applied to the surface of the stone because they can have and often do have an injurious effect upon the material. This stone, when it's cleaned, will be put back in its original place. Where a skill has been applied to a building, it's very important that the mason preparing a replacement stone replace it with the same degree of skill that the original craftsman did. Otherwise, you obtain a difference in technique and in craftsmanship that is unpleasant on the building.
removing eroded stone for restoration it has to be carried out fairly carefully to avoid damage to the surrounding material it wishes to remain. It's done either by hand, using uh, steel hammers and punches, or occasionally by using pneumatic tools. Oh, nothing. Fine, thank you. Right. Let me check that. Right. Two and a half, that's good. You need a bit more there, right? Yeah. Let me go and that. This stone is an octagonal gable finial. Originally it had a uh, another stone on top of it. Its identity has been lost. Yeah, we are searching for a detail for it. The bedding mortar is placed between the two stones to evenly distribute the weight of the stone, which would be in the vicinity of well, a quarter of a ton, a little bit more. The adhesive quality of the mortar isn't important and the building was held together by the weight of the weight of the stone itself bonded so that uh, little movement would occur we've been working on Sydney Tech for about three years and the interesting part about it as far as we're concerned is that there's no job in Sydney that contains the same degree of complex masonry and this is why it's of particular interest to apprentices who are would never in the normal course of events ever obtain experience in this type of work at such an early stage of their careers. Well, for some reason, they never proceeded with the carving that was indicated up in this gable. This is where they've got the brickwork, isn't it? Yeah. Generally, though, they've kept fairly rigidly to the plan that was drawn in 1890. My philosophy of stonemasonry is one that I hold in common with Every stone mason that I know, we wouldn't want to be anything else. It's a satisfying craft and a man is still required to produce a lasting and permanent reminder of his work in a building of some beauty. Today, the preservation of stone buildings of earlier centuries has become an important and very significant thing, I believe, as a reminder to people of an earlier and in many instances a more stable age and perhaps gives a feeling of solidity to a disturbed society.